we as an assembly now have realized that in the past uh, the committee of ministers and the parliamentary assembly being both the two statutory organs of this uh, organization did act in a unilateral way and that was not very uh, uh, effective now the Assembly calls for a joint procedure together with the Committee of Ministers and with the Secretary-General to operate when, in cases, a member state blatantly violates the statute of our Council of Europe or the EU Convention on Human Rights. Uh, I have signals from the Chair of the Committee of Ministers, Minister Soini from Finland, and we got uh, uh, signals from the Secretary-General of the Assembly, Mr. Jakland, that they too uh, are in favour of such a joint uh, uh, procedure. Uh, in the ministerial conference in Helsinki, which will be half May, the Committee of Ministers will now have to make up its mind. And the good thing is that now the Assembly has laid its proposals on the table. It's also very important that in our proposal we do not give away any rights of the Assembly, but we will have new rights. That is the right to be involved in a procedure uh, when a, a member state violates the statute or the Convention on Human Rights and that we will be able to initiate such a procedure. This is new, did not happen in the past, so I'm grateful for the Committee of Ministers and the Secretary-General that they allow the Assembly in, in the procedure that is, in the end, the only serious procedure how to act if a member state violates the statute or the Convention. Until now we only had means as an assembly to say something or in the worst case to block uh, a member state's delegation from being here or voting. Uh, we realized that after five years, uh, I'm now referring to the conflict with Russia, that did not bring us uh, anywhere. And I hope that this new mechanism will give our assembly a stronger voice when invoking the articles in the convention and in the statute that deal with what to do with a member state that does violate its obligations. I think in the report that we now have adopted we did several things. One important issue is, and here again I am in agreement with the Committee of Ministers and the Secretary General, that we do not say anymore that it is a right for a member state's parliament to be presented here, but it is an obligation, as it is stated in the statute. All member states shall be represented in our assembly. So the Russian Federation parliament has to present a delegation to this assembly. And I hope that the, the Russians, who are very keen of keeping uh, uh, close to the statute, that they will realize that this decision is now there. And again, this is in our report, but it's also confirmed by the Committee of Ministers and the Secretary General in their, their documents. That is important. Secondly, it shows this report that we really care for the statute of the Council of Europe, that we really stick to what is uh, said in, in our constitution, you could say. It was the Russian side who kept saying that we should look more carefully to the statute in less of only to our rules of procedure. That is happening now. So it's now to, up to our colleagues in, 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 in the State Duma and in the Federation Council to see if they agree with this approach. Uh, during the ad hoc committee, the Russian, uh, Russian parliament participated in our talks with all the other 47 member states' parliament and made a lot of serious proposals. Some of them are also included in my report. So, I think it's now time for the Russian parliament, which has been newly elected since the crisis of 2014, to look again uh, to present a delegation to this assembly and to work together with all the 47, uh, 46 other member states' parliament in this assembly for the goals where this organization was for, in order to, to unite and not to divide a Europe and to work for human rights, rule of law and democracy throughout the continent. As I said yesterday, from Reykjavik to Vladivostok and from the North Pole to the Mediterranean. In my opinion, in that assembly, the Russian Federation has to have its place. It's our biggest member state. Staying away is no longer a serious option, I would say to my colleagues in Russia.